How to create an iOS Cupertino Picker view in Flutter so that you can scroll through a list of items. You could also attach this Cupertino Picker view to a bottom sheet pop-up. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started within the build method. Here we want to create a Cupertino Picker widget and inside of it you supply then all the items that you want to display inside of this widget. Next, you need to define the height of each of these widgets and therefore you have the property item extent and I set here the height to 64 pixels. Also make sure that you implement the onSelected item change property. And with this, we have here this Cupertino picker of our five items that we have defined inside of this children property. By default, the selected items are always not centered and that's what we want to change. Simply make sure that each of your children has the center widget wrapped around. Make sure to click this time on hot restart and then you should see here the item centered inside of our Cupertino picker. Next we want to refactor our code and move here these items out. Therefore I go here to the state level and I create then here each of the items that we have created before here at the bottom. And then we also replace here this children property with that we map here over our items. And for each of these items that we have here inside of this list, we create then again a centered text widget. And lastly, we want to give our items a bigger font size and with this, they are now bigger displayed. Next, we want to wrap our Cupertino picker inside of a list view or a column. And if you do this, then you see that we always display here only one item for our picker. And therefore, we also want to set the height of our picker. And to do this, you can simply wrap here a size box around and then you can set here the individual height of your Cupertino picker. So I have put it here to a height of 350 pixels. And finally, we want to get the current selected item of our Cupertino picker and therefore we simply go inside of the onSelected item change property where we get then every time the index of the current selected item. And this index we simply want to save then inside of our state and therefore I create here at the top a new index field. And secondly, we want to go here back and then we also want to print our current item and therefore we go here simply over our items list where we have all of our items inside and based on this index we get then the current item which we simply print to the console. And next to it, I will also create here on top of our Cupertino picker a text widget and here inside I also put then the current selected item inside. And with this, you see if I scroll here through, then he always displays the current selected item here on top of our Cupertino picker and also inside of the console. Right now, if you scroll to the start or to the end, then you cannot scroll further anymore. And you can also set here the property looping to true to have an infinite list where you can always scroll through the items. Next, we want to add our Cupertino picker inside of a bottom sheet pop-up. Therefore, we simply extract here our whole Cupertino picker and simply put it inside of a new method build picker. Let's also create under our text widget a Cupertino button with the text open picker. And now if we click on this open picker button, then we are going inside of this on pressed handler. And here inside we call then the method show pop-up. And inside of the builder property, you can then create here a Cupertino action sheet where you need to create then an action. And inside of this action, we create then our build picker method, which we have created before. And with this, I click here on this open picker button and then we see our current Cupertino picker inside of this bottom sheet. And if you like, you can also go here again up to this message show Cupertino pop up and here inside you can also integrate a cancel button, which is then displayed under our actions. So it is simply displayed here at the bottom so that the user can cancel at any time easily. Next, we want to set the default and initial selected item because right now we always display here the item one if I click here on open picker. However, maybe you want to show here then another item instead initially. And secondly, if I have here an item selected and I close this Cupertino picker and open it up again, then you see that our state is here lost and he didn't pick again the item that we have picked before. 
And to fix this, we simply go to our Cupertino picker and here you have a property scroll controller. And therefore we want to create here a new scroll controller in our state. And we also want to initialize this controller inside of the init state method. Therefore we create here a new fixed extend scroll controller. And inside of the scroll controller, you can then set the initial item. And therefore we simply put it to the index, which we have defined here in our state. And lastly, also make sure that you clean the scroll controller again up within the dispose method. Let's also try it out. Therefore, I change here the initial selected index, which is then going inside of our scroll controller. And now you can click here on hot restart and then click on the open picker button. And you see initially we have now selected the item three. And this is exactly the item of this index that we have defined. So all in all, we can now set the initial item over the scroll controller, which is then attached to our Cupertino picker. And secondly, we want to preserve the state of our Cupertino picker. So if I change here the item, then I close this Cupertino picker and open it up again. Then you see that he selects again the initial item that we have defined here at the top over this index. However, this is not quite right. Therefore, we want to go to our Cupertino button and inside of the onPressed handler. So before we click on this button, then we want to call also here the scroll controller dispose method so that we clean it up again. And then we create here a completely new scroll controller and set here the index inside that we have currently inside of our state. And with this, we make sure that we can select here now our item. And if we open our sheet again up, then it simply selects again the same item that we have selected before, like you can see. We also want to change the color and shape of our selected item. Therefore, simply go inside of your Cupertino picker and here inside you have the selection overlay and you can simply set it to a container if you want to remove here this grayish container around. So now if I hot reload, you see that our grayish container disappears. On the other hand, you can also create here this Cupertino picker overlay and then you can customize here the color of this overlay. So I set it here to a bluish color with some opacity. And now if I hot reload, you see that we have here this bluish overlay. And finally, we want to change the font color of our selected item. And therefore we need to change here our implementation of this children property a bit. Therefore I simply replace it here by this list generate. And with this we have now access to the index of all of our items. And finally with the help of this index we can then determine if our item is currently selected. And if this is the case then we can choose here the color of our selected item. So I put here then the color to a bluish color if it is selected otherwise we set it here to a black color. And then we can simply put here this color inside of our text style so that we change the text color. And with this we have also changed the text color of our current selected item. If we change now here our items then you see that this item 3 color stays here inside and our item 4 doesn't get here the foreground color. And to fix this is pretty simple. Simply wrap around your Cupertino the stateful builder widget and with this we get here access to a set state method. And now we use here at the bottom this set state method instead for rebuilding our index. Let's also try it out. If I scroll here through the items, everything is again working fine. Optionally, if you like, you can also put the current selected item every time here inside of a text field widget. And this is what I want to show you right now. Therefore, we replace here simply the text widget, which is right now here displaying our current item by a simple Cupertino text field. Inside of this Cupertino text field, we want to create a controller so that we can control this text field. And therefore we create here this controller in our state. And we also need to initialize it. And here within this text, we also make sure that we always put the current selected item inside. So this is our initial item and we also want to dispose our controller. And now if I hot restart, we have here our simple text field with the initial selected item that we have put here inside of our controller. Next, we want to go here back to our Cupertino text field. And here inside, we also want to style it a bit so that the text is displayed in a bigger font size. 
By default, you can interact with this text field, so you can write here inside, and if you have a real device, it would also show here your keyboard. And this is what we want to prevent, and therefore we set here these both to flex. And with this, we make sure that we cannot interact manually with this text field anymore. Now we can only change over this controller then here the value inside, and therefore we simply go here all the way down to our Cupertino picker. So here we are at the Cupertino picker, and every time if we change then our item selection, then we want to put it inside of our controller so that we manipulate here the text inside of this text field. And with this we have now connected our Cupertino picker to our text field here at the top so that the value is always changing. And finally you can also jump programmatically to any items of your list and to do this is pretty simple, simply take here this scroll controller that we have created initially and which was attached to our Cupertino picker. And on the scroll controller you have then the method animate to item where you can put every time the index inside to which item you want to go here inside of your list. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole example of this application, then you can get it with the first link in the description and with the second link you can get access to my Flutter courses where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.